welcome to this special. They say in business as in life, change is the only constant and one company that is seeing it from deep within is Larson and Tubro. On the 9th of March, the company's chairman A.M. Nayak put to rest a lot of speculation when he announced his succession plan. Over the next half hour, we find out how this fits into the larger plan and what sense it makes. Look at L&D, India's largest engineering and construction company and it's hard to imagine that it started its journey from a small office in Old Bombay. And it is said that the room was so small that it could seat just one person at a time and one of the two engineers who had started the company had to constantly stay out so he just went around looking for new orders. In a sense, that story reflects the spirit of this company, driven by engineers and the spirit of enterprise. But the transformation of a niche specialist like L&T into an engineering behemoth was in many ways thanks to this man, A.M. Nayak, who put in place a step-by-step -step strategy with his team to make L&T one of the most powerful Indian conglomerates. To begin with, the reason was to ensure that the company became too big to mess with. After all, it had been in the middle of more than one takeover battle. But over the years, it seems that the problem became the reverse. L&T became just too big to manage on its own. So 2005 to 10, in my opinion, the economy grew much faster, if you see, at 7, 8 and then eventually 9%. Opportunities were much more, structural changes, reforms were uh, taking deeper roots and the competition was increasing by the day for L&T with lots of international players, many Indian companies catching up with L&T Almost any company in our field, if you were to talk, what is your benchmark? What do you want to become if you independently even today interview them? They'll say our, our, our objective is to become another Larson to grow, right? So we did become benchmark and, and, uh, uh, for the Indian industry, but our benchmark was always global industry. As the economy grew, so did every one of the businesses L&T was in and eventually, as a global slowdown hit, it also reversed its fortunes. The company had to recalibrate plans. In January 2011, nearly two years before retiring, the company's chairman created a wave when he announced that he was splitting up the massive conglomerate that he had helped create. Well, I mean, you know, L&T has 152 business segment. Not many people realize it, in spite of the fact that a lot of them, have, which, were, which were not uh, core or adjacent core, we actually sold it. And some of small, small activity we closed. Of course, we acquired one or two also. But on the whole, we have reduced our number of uh, uh, activities and tried to concentrate on what we are good at, which is building India. Now, even then, if you look at from switchgear to small valves to little electrode to nuclear submarine, within infrastructure almost all the segment, it became almost impossible for anyone to see whether next five years, however, you can say the most competent person one can bring will be not that easy task. And therefore, we needed to somewhat simplify our organization. What is attempted, therefore, is to have formed, though we call it independent companies, and many people therefore get misguided that they must be all spun off and listed. We are calling it independent companies basically to give rise to the feeling of a completely independently listed type activity, but they are actually going to be listed in chairman's office because finally there is only one balance sheet. And why I'm saying they will be listed in, in chairman's office, because I'm going to discover what is the market cap of each one of them. And then I will, we will compare and benchmark with their competitor, individual competitor, where do they stand. In an overall conglomeration, l and is four levels of conglomeration. At the business unit level, it's a conglomeration of segment. At the... Uh, strategic business group level, it's a conglomeration of many business units. And at the IC level, independent company level, it's a conglomeration of many strategic business group. And at the l &T level, it's a conglomeration of so many IC now that we have formed. Earlier, it was confused. Now we have tried to bring some clarity. Don't forget, 
<laughs> there are six more subsidiaries. Yeah. You have, important we have I mean, IT, we have power. now l and Finance going. Power development. Power is yeah. now one of the nine. Yeah. And, and then we have infrastructure development where we have 45,000 crore worth of project. Power development where we have 15,000 crore going up to 50,000 in the next uh, five years. And uh, then we have Hyderabad Metro. Then we have LNT Reality, which is not much talked about. So I'm going to build that up. So you are talking already about something like 16 to 17 companies. Adding a layer of complexity to the plan then was the fact that time was running out. AM Nike was due to retire in October 2012. But more than a year later, after this meeting, after a massive round of speculation around will he or won't he continue as chairman, AM Nike did announce a successor and a plan ahead. More on why this man has decided to stay on as the executive chairman of LNT after this break.